As we move into looking at the second set of polyatomic ions from your flashcard list, we'll notice that there, there's some similarities. Some of the names look uh, the same as we saw in the first set, um, but there are some small differences, both in terms of the formulas and also the names. So what we want to take a look at is how do those changes correspond to one another and how can we apply those changes to a wide variety of ions. So if we take, for example, a common polyatomic ion from the first set, chlorate. And so we see that chlorate ends with that A-T-E ending. And so ending with A-T-E tells us that oxygen is going to be present linked with chlorine. So we see Cl and we see oxygen. And we remember that we have our choices were either three or four oxygens for the eight ions, the A-T-E ions. And so in this case, it's ClO3 with a minus one charge. Now, if we change that ending slightly and instead we have chlorite with an I-T-E ending. Obviously, it's going to involve chlorine again. And its ending you know, is derived from that A-T-E, so that's still cluing us in that oxygen is going to be present. But what it does is it changes the number of oxygens that are present. So chlorite has the formula ClO2 with a minus one charge. Okay? So you might you know, be looking at some things here and say, okay, you know, the Cl is the same, the O is the same, the subscript of the oxygen, the number of oxygens is changing, but that charge is also staying the same. Okay? And that's, you know, the, the change is important to notice, but what's staying the same is also important to notice as well. So if we continue, there are other ways that we can modify both the formulas and the names to get yet other polyatomic ions. So in this case, we subtracted one oxygen, so there's still two there. Why not take another one? And so the formula ClO, which now has taken away yet another oxygen, still the same charge, okay? Obviously, these two are different, so the names are gonna ha have to be different as well. And the name for this ion is hypochlorite. All right, and so in that name, again, we see the ITE ending. First time we saw it is when we reduced the number of oxygens. Well, we've reduced it even more and taken another one away. So that's a common feature. Whenever you see ITE, you know you have fewer oxygens than you did in that common kind of baseline form of the polyatomic ion. These are both taking oxygens away, but they're different. So again, there has to be something to distinguish the two formulas, and that's where this hypo prefix comes in. And, and this is a common prefix that we see um, if you talk about somebody that's hypoglycemic, they have low blood sugar, um, that hypo prefix means that you have an even lower number of something. So it's kind of the combination of the ITE ending plus the hypo that tells you your number of oxygens is going to be two less than the base form. And that's the important way to think of it. Don't think of it in absolute terms. Ite always means two, and hypoite always means one. It's a relative naming system. So think of it in terms of if I see ite, it's going to be one less oxygen than the common form. If I see hypo and ite, it's going to be two less oxygens than the most common form. That way, it doesn't matter whether you've got three or four oxygens in that basic form you can get the proper number of oxygens by thinking of it relativistically. So in these cases, we've taken an oxygen away and changed the name, but what happens if we add an oxygen to the common form? And so in this case, you can see, still dealing with chlorine, we've now added one oxygen, and again, the charge is the same. So that's nice, okay? Anytime you have a set of polyatomic ions based on a given element, the charges of those respective polyatomic ions, that doesn't change. So that's a nice thing. Um, but again, the formula is different, so the name is going to have to be different as well. And so ClO4 with a minus one charge is known as the perchlorate ion. And so we see the ATE ending. We know we're at least at ClO3 in this case, but now we have the per prefix. And the per prefix um, actually comes from a, a a root that is very similar to what hypo came from. If you think about the term hyper, so if something is hyper, it means it's heightened, it's got more, it's got an excess of. And so per is actually the, the back end of that. So instead of saying hyperchlorate, it's just perchlorate. So whenever you see per tacked onto the front of the name, that's telling you you've got more oxygens than the common baseline form. And so this system of using 
uh, changing the endings, but also utilizing prefixes allows us to start with what we know in terms of one common formula, but then modify it to get a total of four different choices.